welcome to Nana's Crafty Home. My name is Tanya. Today's tutorial is going to show you how to complete this candy cane border in three colors. You can see here how fun this is. It's worked in very simple stitches. Essentially, it's single crochet and chains. That's it. Uh, so basically, you're folding these chains over to create this interesting look here. Uh, typically, you may see this in two colors. I did adjust uh, the stitch just slightly in order to accommodate that third color, which I think looks great. You can see here that I made my base to start my border. I have this cute little gnome uh, dishcloth that I made and you can find as a free pattern on my website. Just click on the link below in the description for this video to head on over to get the free written pattern instructions as well as the full color graph to create your own uh, dishcloth. This would also be a um, good size coaster once you've added the border larger than what you would typically find for a coaster, but certainly uh, you could use it for that as well. Uh, for the video tutorial today, I am using Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton, uh, bright, vibrant, beautiful colors. You really only need uh, scraps, um, just small amounts of the colors here. I'm using uh, a teal and a red and a white uh, for this dishcloth. So all three of those colors will be worked on my border. I did uh, start with a single crochet evenly around the outside edge in order to uh, make it a little easier and it looks a lot more professional if you work your border, especially when you're doing corner to corner uh, because you have some jagged edges and um, that single crochet around the outside edge really does clean up that edge and gives you a much more polished and professional look uh, on this border here. So you're gonna so to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my yarn anywhere here on the outside edge. You wouldn't have needed to fasten off, just continued on with that color, uh, but I did fasten off, so I'm going to reattach here uh, with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to begin that first stitch, which is going to be at chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to remove my hook from that loop. I'm going to pull that loop up a little bit. <clears throat> and that's going to be a good practice for you as you're working the stitch uh, because um, you're going to be working that same thing uh, with each one of your colors and then coming back to pull up this loop. So you're going to want to make sure that that loop doesn't uh, pull, doesn't pull through, um, you're going to want to keep that nice and tall so it's easy to find later. We're going to add now our second color, so I'm going to bring in my red. And again, I'm going to slip stitch to the very next stitch. So right here I've worked that chain five, the slip stitch, I've attached it. I'm working in the very next stitch after that. And again, slip stitch and chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And again, pull up that loop. So now I have both of these colors five chains in both. Now I'm going to bring in my white, my third color, with the same technique. So I'm just going to slip stitch and join in the next stitch following that red. So inserting my hook and slip stitching and chaining five. One, two, three, four, five. Pull up a nice big loop there. So now I have all three colors have been attached to my border. I've worked a chain five for each color. And now I'm going to come back and insert my hook back into that first color loop here. So back in that blue. And I'm going to work in the stitch following the white. 
So in that very next stitch over here, I'm going to be inserting my hook and working a single crochet and then a chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Pull up a nice big loop. And you can see here that that chain five from the beginning folded over the red and the white chains. Now I'm going to remove my hook again out of that blue and insert my hook back into the red. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to insert my hook into the very next stitch after that blue and work a single crochet and a chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Pull up a big loop. And now that red has folded over that chain that had folded over the blue and it's folded over the white and the blue again. So now I'm going to remove my hook out of the red and insert it into the white. And again, inserting my hook into the very next stitch after that red and single crochet and chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Pull up a nice big loop and you can see here, I have folded that white over the red and the blue. And it looks like my red might have pulled here. So one, two, three, four, yep, it did pull out a chain. And that's why it's important to pull that loop up nice and big. So that way that doesn't happen. But you can always add your chains back in if they do that. So I've got my blue, my red, and my white, and I have my chains again up here. I had removed my hook out of the white, inserting it back into my first color, the blue, and I'm gonna just keep repeating those same steps over and over again. So in the next stitch, working a single crochet and chaining five, one, two, three, four and five, pulling up a big loop, removing my hook. So just keep repeating those steps, working that single crochet, chain five, removing our hook, inserting it back into the first color of the group and repeating that over and over until we get to the corner space here. All right, so when we've worked all the way down the side here and we've arrived at that corner space, what we're going to do is we're going to work all of the colors into one stitch. So in that corner space, we're going to work three stitches. So when we get there, we pull up our next color that we would be working and in that corner space, go ahead and work your first stitch by single crocheting in it and then chaining five. And pull up our loop like normal. We're gonna go back to color number two. And we're going to work a single crochet in that same space that we just worked the red. I'm going to go now and work that white with a single crochet in that same stitch and chaining five. Removing my hook, going to color number three. And working a single crochet in that same stitch that I just worked the white and the red. Single crochet and chain five. Okay, so now I've worked all of those three stitches into that one chain space, that corner space from the previous row. And now I just continue on down my side, working one stitch in every stitch. So going back to my red, working in the next stitch and chaining five. 
and that helped me turn that corner so that way um, I don't have bunching, it's not curling up, it's gonna help me turn that corner and it's gonna look really nice along that edge. So just continue on now until we get to uh, the end of our project. Okay, so I've gotten to the end here and I'm getting ready to fasten off. Uh, you can see here I have one more stitch to work. And when you're end, at the end of your border, what you're gonna wanna do is pay attention to your colors. So of course I started with the blue, red, and then white. So when we get to the end, we want that same pattern to continue throughout. You don't wanna be able to see uh, where you ended uh, on your border. So you can see here I've just worked a red, my next one would be white, and then of course it would be blue. So I have one stitch left to work, so I don't need to make any adjustments. If I had worked that last stitch and it wasn't the correct order, you may need to skip a stitch, uh, which won't be seen. Um, so I'm gonna work this last stitch here with my white. And chain my five. And now I'm going to be finishing off each of these. So I'm gonna come back to my blue and I'm going to come down here to my next stitch. So I would be working it here and that would be the first stitch of where I started in this pattern. So I'm going to do a slip stitch into that first stitch and fasten off. I'm gonna come back to my red, which is the next color I should be working. And I'm gonna to go to the next stitch here, which was the second one that I started out with on the red. And I'm gonna slip stitch to that same stitch. And I am just going to pull that through and fasten off and pull through. Now my white is my last one. I'm going to come back down here to the next stitch, which would be the white from the beginning, and work a slip stitch into that first stitch. And then fasten off. Pull through, and you can see here That all looks good. My colors are in the right order. I can, I'm ready to go ahead and weave in those ends and I'm not gonna be able to see where I started and where I ended my project. And there you have it, the candy cane border in three colors. Head on over to the blog to get your free written pattern instructions as well as the full color graph for this really cute uh, corner to corner gnome dishcloth that you can also use as a coaster. Uh, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get notified whenever I post a new video. If you have any questions about any of my designs, patterns, or tutorials, please reach out to me. I am happy to answer any of your questions or help in any way possible. As always, everyone, thank you so much for being here with me today. Take care. Bye-bye.